Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mega Dang and I'm a type 1 diabetic and today I'll be talking about taking standardized tests with type 1 diabetes. <music> One thing that may be more difficult, stressful, and harder than having to deal with a chronic illness like type 1 diabetes is the stress of high school and thinking about college in the future. When I was in high school and especially my junior year, um, something I was really stressed about was taking standardized tests such as the ACT and SAT. Even though those tests on their own are stressful enough, having diabetes added another layer of stress for me. While I like to think that I manage my diabetes relatively well, at the end of the day, my blood sugars like to do what my blood sugars like to do no matter what scenario I'm in or however well I try to handle it. What this essentially means is that during important times of your life such as the SAT and ACT you need to make sure that your blood sugars fluctuations and decisions don't interact with your performance. So for any diabetics out there preparing or thinking about taking the SAT or ACT I hope this video helps you guys and, and I'll give you some tips on what I did in terms of diabetes and taking these standardized tests. So again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below like always and I'll be sure to give you a response. So the first tip I have for you um, is to discuss your options with your counselor. So if you feel like you should be in a special testing room because of your diabetes, your counselor will be able to help you out with this. Especially if you have a 504 plan, which is like, I don't know exactly the logistics of that, but a 504 plan basically outlines your condition and accommodations you'll need. And if you have a 504 plan, they can always find an accommodation for you. When I talked to my counselor, she said an option for me was to take the test by myself in a secluded room just with her. Why this was beneficial was that if I need to stop for any reason during the test, she would pause the time and I can go test my blood sugars, I could go eat a snack or do whatever I need without it taking up time for the test. I tried this for my first SAT official testing and for me it personally didn't work because when I test I like to be surrounded by a lot of other kids who are testing so that I kind of feel the pressure. So I found that I actually did worse on the test where I was alone even though I have those accommodations than I did when I was in a big testing room. But I highly still suggest, and I'm really glad that I did that because I knew my options. So I would suggest talking to your counselor and seeing what accommodations you guys can find to best fit your scenario. This is really important because in, during a test, if your blood sugar spikes low or high and you don't have these kind of accommodations and you don't talk about it, then correcting them may take the time out of the testing time limit. So I suggest you talk to your counselor and see what plan can fit best for you um, in terms of taking the test and the time constraints associated with it. So my second point is to be prepared with snacks. This is a big one. So whether you're in a test or not, it's important as a diabetic to always carry around snacks with you. But I suggest really figuring out the best ones for you during the test. For example, if you decide not to take a test one-on-one -on -one and just to go into the big room like I did in the future, I suggest figuring out what kind of snacks are easy Easy to just like take it really fast and not take up a lot of your time to get your blood sugar up. I would also suggest finding snacks so don't spike it up too much if that's not what you want and just figure out what the best is for you. Along with that is wearing a Dexcom or a Guardian or some kind of continuous glucose monitor so that you can track your blood sugars while you take the test and correct it with those snacks as needed. Some snacks that I suggest would be applesauces, tablets, which are an obvious one, Skittles or some kind of candy, juice boxes, and also maybe fruits or something that you can eat during break that's maybe a little bit more enjoyable. So the third point I have in suggestion is to dress comfortably and get a good night rest. So this is applicable to everybody, not just diabetics, but before a big test, I highly suggest getting a good night's sleep and also dressing comfortably for the test. So the night before the test, don't try to cram anything in too hard. Um, honestly, I didn't even study at all before the night because I felt like it wasn't going to be anything beneficial and I've already done everything that I can. I also suggest to the test, don't wear anything that's uncomfortable or that you'll fiddle around with or be bothered with. I would just suggest being comfortable and getting enough sleep so that you can test to your best performance. So I hope this video helps any of you diabetics out there um, who are going through this stressful time of ACT, SAT, and any other kind of big tests out there. I feel that these kind of standardized tests are stressful enough on their own and diabetes shouldn't 
affect you at all negatively because it's important that we don't let this disease get in our way. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave it down below. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.